So I'm going to be using these. These are oak panels. They were salvaged from an old player piano built in 1936. And I have stripped the finish off of these. They are oak panels with mahogany veneer. And somebody had covered them with this ugly black paint. So I stripped all the paint off, sanded them down, and I have one coat of wipe on poly on them just to protect them. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be milling these up and I'm basically going to make a wall mounted cabinet. I, I drew it up. It doesn't look like much, but so I'm going to make a wall mounted cabinet out of these and some other pieces. So that's what this build is going to be. I'm going to be building a cabinet with a drawer. So is it really a cabinet or is it just a wall mounted drawer? I mean, you choose. So check this out. cutting this angle in here because I don't really need this all but before I decide on that final angle I need to see how wide my drawer stock is going to be I've stripped it I'm going to run I've stripped most of the black paint off I'm going to run it through the drum sander and get it nice and flat and then I'll mill it up and see where I need my angle at so when I get that done I'll come back built-in dado for my drawer bottom. I, I don't need to cut it off at all. So this will be the height of my drawer. I like the mahogany veneer on this. I just need to, to sand it up. Okay, I've got the back cut to length. Now I'm going to cut it to width. Okay, so here's the back. This will be the top behind the drawer. So now I need to cut the angle on these. When I'm set up for that, I'll come back. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut my angle up here. This is not the best angle gauge in the world, but it works. Alright, when I'm set up for the next step, I'll come back. This mahogany veneer is just beautiful. So what I've done is I've stained the raw edges of this oak to kind of match. And I've stained this poplar. This is two layers of melamine, three quarter inch melamine. I built this 20 years ago. I was going to make a drill press table out of it. And I just never did and it sat around and it sat around. And I thought, you know, this will make the perfect top, nice and beefy, for my sharpening station. With the exception of the drawer, I think I have all of my case pieces cut and mid. I do need to put a round over on these corners because I don't. It's a mild round over. I don't want them. I just need to soften them. I got a pretty good round over on this one. But I think this one I'll use the 8 inch round over bit and I'll just knock those down a little bit. Because I don't want sharp corners. These things will cut you. It's actually going to be a little wider than this. I need clearance back here for my jig for sharpening my tools. So I'm doing this by taking another piece of wood from the piano.
this is rainbow poplar, 100 year old rainbow poplar, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So it's going to sit back here in the back. But isn't that pretty? Most of the milling and surface finishing is done. Once I get the case finished, then I can start working on the drawer. All right, I've got these sanded up and the edges rounded off. But I forgot to show you what was on the inside of that oak panel. It's veneered with mahogany and green poplar. Beautiful green poplar and green poplar on the back. I've never seen so much green poplar. If you remember my intarsia project with the frog that I made, the St. Patrick's Day frog that I scrolled for my wife, it's on my other channel and I'll put a link to that at the end. There were some large pieces of green poplar in that piano. I'm going to use screws and some glue to hold this frame together. I cut this piece to go here to be what holds the bottom of the drawer. I don't really need a full length one. I'm going to make another piece of scrap wood. Most people consider poplar somewhat of a junk wood, but how can a piece of wood that pretty be junk wood? The underside is where the drawer is going to be. The drawer carcass, if you will. I left this hollow to keep it light, but I've still got enough structure here to keep it strong. And this will be the first thing I put together. Time to drill my pocket hole. When I'm set up to put that piece together, I'll come back. Okay, time to put this first one on. I've got this clamp to give me a nice square edge. I'm holding this with some down pressure and I'm clamping it here because I want to keep it flat. So I'm doing my best to make sure I keep this square. This is a butt joint of sorts, so the glue doesn't do a whole a lot of good, but it does help. Do the same thing here. Hold some down pressure on both of these, keep them nice and flat. Well, I got it together. I didn't get it quite as level as I wanted, but uh, because it, I had to pre-drill the holes and I missed by about a 30 second. But, block plane to the rescue. So this is what the drawer is going to slide on. That is smooth enough. So this piece is done. And we got the pocket holes in it. Now I can start putting the top of the case together. When I'm set up for that, I'll come back. Okay, I've got this glued on, nice and flush, got the hole pre-drilled. I'm using three inch screws because I really want this to be strong. Hopefully it's also square. About as square as I can make it. It's actually very good. So I'll show you how I did that. Here. 
you know what I did? I put these on backwards. These were supposed to be to the outside, but I'm not about to take it apart and do it again. Dang it. Can you think and you think and you still screw up? When I calm down a little bit, I'll come back. Put my pocket hole to the top. Sorry guys, I got flustered and forgot to move the camera. So what I'm doing now... ...is screwing the back part of the top on. I'm not using any glue here because gravity is going to hold this down. I can put this back in. Yeah, I had about five screws in this thing a while ago. And then realized I couldn't get to my screw holes because I should have done this first. So... the box I'm almost completely built except for the drawer and not putting this top on and I'm going to put the top on last because this thing is heavy and this is already pretty heavy and so I need a way to hold this on the wall and how am I going to hold that on here I did try to take these back apart right after I turned the camera off and the glue had already set too much and I was not able. I will just drive three inch screws like I did here on the screws on the back. I'll drive three inch screws through the top end of this and that'll be fine. So the carcass is pretty much done. The heavy top will go on after I get this mounted to the wall. I came out here this morning and fixed my mess up the best I could. Uh, I've stained it and you can see it's really close to what the mahogany looks like. It's not going to have the same pretty grain. It's still going to be one of the prettiest shop fixtures I've ever made. I, I got the drawer pieces cut. Sides already had the rabbit in them. Again, from that old piano. And it fits. It's a little stuck. Not bad. Some sanding and some wax, I think, will fix that right up. I used glue and pocket hole screws to hold the sides to the front. I also cut the dado in the in the back piece and cut it to length. It's going to fit in here. I cut it a little short because I wanted to clear these locks uh, or drawer stays. These will be screwed to the underside of that big piece of top up here, up to the front. And they will keep the drawer from being pulled out onto the floor. A cheap way to do this without spending money on full extension drawer slides or even partial extension drawer slides 
but you'll see that as I'm putting it together. I just finished cutting and sanding the bottom. Let's see if it'll fit. I will come back out in the morning and probably put two more coats on the outside and on the uh, front of the drawer. So I've got this set in place. I'm going to pre-drill my holes. I will not mount this till this is on the wall. But I am going to pre-drill the holes so I know where it goes. Okay, as you notice, some of this poplar is pretty soft. So I'm going to stiffen that up with a little Starbond thin. Just to give it a little better hold, I'm going to go in with three inch screws. So I'm not worried about it coming off again. Gravity is going to keep it in place. But I don't want it rocking around either. Alright, I've got my studs marked and this will fit perfectly between the studs. So I made me a story stick with where the studs are. So I'll take my story stick. Oh, two and a quarter of it. But I really don't want this coming off the wall. Set up to screw this to the wall and I'll come back. Alright, I'm going to start one screw in the top left hole. Okay, man, there is no 
movement in this whatsoever. Over engineered, don't I everything? Now I want to make sure the drawer fits. I need to shave this off and it'll be okay. I'm happy with it. The grinder is going to sit up a little higher. I have a trick I'm going to employ for the grinder itself or the grinder. The grinder is on a base and it's just right. I don't want to screw it to this because I might find that I want to turn the grinder back around if just for a second for something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill dowel holes in the base and I'm going to try to centralize them best I can. And then I'm going to bring those measurements over here and drill a hole and put the dowels in it. So, so all I have to do is pick it up and turn it around. Okay, I've got the dowels in and glued into here. They're curing, so I won't move this. I won't take this off until the glue's dry, which will be tomorrow. And then if I wanted to, I can pick it up, turn it around, and put it back down. I also installed the pull. I had an old pull, and I've installed the drawer stops. I've got my two inches set back over here, or inch and three quarter, to set my depth on my gouge before I put it in here. If it goes back far enough, I doubt I'll ever be grinding a tool that short. And if I want to get it out of the way, I just set it under here so that I'm not running into it. So again, just a few cosmetic things to take care of, but my new station is installed and fully functional. So here it is, my complete finishing station. It's got, I don't know, four, six coats of satin wipe on poly on it. I think it's well protected. I had to do a little surgery on the drawer front in order to get the <laughs> in order to get the drawer to clear the stops that I put in but the drawer doesn't come out now so it's good that's what I wanted it does go all the way in that's what I wanted as well I'm gonna leave this crack for now because that finish hasn't dried yet I'm ready it's done so what am I going to keep in this drawer well in this drawer I'm going to keep the angles the, the Stuart Patty angle gauges so those will stay in here this will stay in here for my skews. This will stay in here for my gouges. So it's never in the way. And what else am I gonna put in there? I don't know yet. I, I thought I was gonna be back to turning today, but it ain't gonna happen. This air cleaner powers my Triton full face helmet respirator. And I need, I've just been laying this over here in the back and, and it's, it's not been good for it. It's always getting full of dust and all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a wall mounted, I'm going to put a wall mount up here and I'm going to turn me a little round that will fit up inside the helmet and I will set this up here, kind of like a wig stand, except it will be for this wig. So that's the next thing I want to do. I want to get this mounted up here so it's out of the way and it stays as clean as possible. I, I, have, I have some other reorganization that I need to take care of because the rack that I had back here on the wall, I had to remove because it was too low. And now I have to figure out, do I want to remount it and put some of that stuff back in it because it's all useful stuff? Or do I want to do something else with it? Sometimes you just need to take a break from, from all the turning and do some stuff. I've cleaned up in here a little bit. I know that's unusual for me, but I mean, I've still got shavings all over the floor, so don't worry. It's still the messy studio and probably always will be. Can't help myself. I've got a lot of ideas in my head for things to turn, especially after squat. Uh, the question is, am I going to get time to turn them? First thing I'm going to do when I get back to turning is, is go back to this little walnut box and the lid that I've been making for it. So hopefully I can get this little jewel finished. So that'll be my next turning that comes out. Hopefully I can start on that in a day or two. I just really need to get this stuff taken care of. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Your support means the world to me. Always does. Thanks again. Y'all have a great day.